Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Breaking news right now, the Senate panel votes on Michigan native Betsy DeVos, President Trump's education secretary nominee. Meantime, there has also been several appointees to his cabinet at this hour. Steve? The mayor with a big announcement this afternoon about the land bank program and the investigation that held it up for several months. He's got some answers for us. Plus, clearing conditions after this morning's rough commute. Is our evening commute going to be anything like this? Let's certainly hope not. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Brandon has been watching over the radar and what's coming our way next. And also a look at the snow totals we had from last night's and this morning's snow. Well, it verified, and that's not to credit us. We're passing along the information, but the models said about two to four, and that's pretty much what we got. And depends on when you hit the road. For those of us who were driving into work at three in the morning, it was the worst of it. Uh, but then later in the morning, things started to melt and get a little bit better and the volume of traffic was high. So it really all in all was sort of a catch 22 or six and a half dozen of the other, whichever one works for you. This is four o'clock in the morning and you see that heavy snow that was coming down at a very good clip. And we continue to see just very light stuff lingering in the area right now. A lot of it is training into our north zone into the thumb and it's very scattered, broken apart. So low clouds and maybe a few flakes and flurries around most of Metro Detroit. But over the next couple of hours, a lion's share of this training north across the thumb region. And as we head through the uh, later afternoon and even evening hours, we still have more snow that needs to pinwheel out of Wisconsin over Lake Michigan. Uh, so we will likely see a little bit more snow. Not worried about major problems during the evening commute. Morning commuters had to deal with this four and a half inches in Monroe. Romulus hit 4.3 at Metro Airport, Garden City three and a half, Brighton almost three and two and a half inches in Milford. So Rhonda, this is as much as we have seen in a little while and coming up, we'll talk about a little bit of snow coming in your Wednesday forecast and numbers up and down. All right, Brandon, thank you. Breaking right now in the nation's capital, U.S. Democrats boycott the Senate Finance Committee meeting on President Trump's picks for health and treasury, demanding more information. Also this noon, news from Washington of Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly. He is holding a news conference right now to discuss President Trump's executive order on immigration. We will keep you updated on the developments there. And if they vote her in, uh, we're also following other breaking news from Washington. A lot going on there today. Senate committee has voted to approve the nomination of Michigan native Betsy DeVos and as Secretary of Education. President Trump uh, appointed DeVos as his nominee on November 23rd. Today, the billionaire businesswoman from Holland, right here in Michigan, was approved by a vote of 12 to 11. It was a very close one. She is now our Secretary of State, our Secretary of Education, I should say. Her confirmation will now go to the full Senate for a final vote. Along with DeVos, Attorney General nominee Jeff Sessions also has his confirmation hearing today. Sessions hearing is going on right now, and if his nomination is approved, he will head the full Senate for a final vote later this week. As that hearing is going on, women are gathering outside to speak out against Sessions nomination. Every single vote for Jeff Sessions is a vote against the United States Constitution. And the question is, do you work for us or do you work for an old boys club? Jeff Sessions, we do not believe, is going to be someone who can be fair and just and help us to move forward what we could not get done under two black attorney generals under President Obama. The comments made by these women and supported by many others follow allegations of racism that have overshadowed Sessions for years. And while the hearings for DeVos and Sessions continues into the afternoon, two of President Trump's other nominees were confirmed this morning. Uh, DeVos confirmed as well, as we said just moments ago. Senate panels approved the nominations of former Texas Governor Rick Perry as Energy Secretary and Montana Representative Ryan Zink. He is the Interior Secretary. Both approvals will now go to the full Senate for a final vote. 
And in about 10 minutes, another confirmation hearing is expected to get underway. In fact, here at 1220, a confirmation vote is expected to be held in the Senate for Secretary of Transportation nominee Elaine K Chow. Chow was nominated by President Trump in November, along with Chow. Uh, President Trump's nomination for Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will also be in front of the Senate today. His confirmation vote is expected to be held tomorrow. Meanwhile, this morning, President Trump met with executives from some of the world's leading pharmaceutical companies. During the meeting, the president laid out his plans to lower drug prices and bring pharmaceutical companies back to the United States, along with pharmaceutical drugs. The president said he also wants to reduce the price of Medicare and Medicaid. And as President Trump awaits a confirmation of his cabinet, he's already begun cleaning out what was left behind. The president fired acting uh, attorney general Sally Yates yesterday after she refused to defend the travel ban. Since then, the president has also replaced the acting director of immigration and customs enforcement, Daniel Ragsdale. At this time, the exact reason for his replacement is still unknown. Back here at home, there is a federal lawsuit that's being filed in Detroit to block President Trump's executive order on immigration. The, Amer the American Arab Civil Rights League claims that the president's order is unconstitutional because it bans Muslim and Arabs from Muslim-majority countries from entering the United States. The suit is being filed on behalf of lawful U.S. residents who are also citizens of the countries named in the executive order. President Trump will also uh, announce his nominee to fill the Supreme Court vacancy caused by the death of Justice Antonin Scalia. That will be tonight at 8 p.m. It will be a primetime address live right here on Local 4, and we'll also carry it for you on ClickOnDetroit.com. And also, our Devin Skillingen is hosting a special edition of Flashpoint at 3 o'clock today on Facebook and ClickOnDetroit.com. He will be talking about what the nation is talking about, immigration and much more. Mayor Mike Duggan is holding a news conference to discuss a state review of Detroit demolitions billing practices and the 2017 outlook for the program. And Steve Gergiola is at the conference. Steve, what is the mayor saying? Well, Ron, the conference ended a few minutes ago. It's all about the Detroit Land Bank. The Detroit Land Bank has the job of bringing down abandoned houses, and that's no small job. The mayor told us this morning there's still about 22,000 abandoned houses that need to come down. But this is about an investigation into how money was spent really back in 2014, 2015. Now, the investigation found that contractors had adjusted prices that were set by contract. The mayor says, Yes, this did happen. There were mistakes made. There were some bad decisions made, but it was a result of being too ambitious about wanting to remove blight too quickly, tear down houses too fast. Prices went up and they made some decisions. Bottom line is the feds say $7.3 million was spent inaccurately or inappropriately that the city needs to pay back. The mayor says the total should be about $1.3 million. Mayor Duggan says this is not about any criminal behavior. The city agencies made mistakes. Uh, there's no question about it. We did not build a strong enough corporate compliance team uh, to manage the high volume. Those mistakes have been fixed. We have that corporate compliance team in place. MISHTA is embedded with us. The processes are working well. Demolition will continue as far as this uh, situation with the money. It's about $6 million. It will go to arbitration. A three-judge panel, the mayor says whatever the arbitrators decide, the city will abide by. Reporting live in Detroit, I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. Taking responsibility. Steve, thank you. Still to come, breaking barriers. The Boy Scouts making changes, major changes to include more children. We'll hear from one of those children impacted. And learning his fate, a man who pled guilty to carjacking a woman and her 85-year-old mother back in court. But will he go to jail? Our client was... Welcome back, everybody. A man who pleaded guilty to carjacking a woman and her 85-year-old mother was sentenced to three years probation today. Police said that 21-year-old D'Antonio Jones was one of two men who forced an elderly <laughs> woman out of a Chevy Tahoe at a gas station on Detroit's west side back in September. The judge told Jones if he violates his probation, he will be resentenced. 
The man accused of shooting his niece to death has been ordered to undergo a competency exam. Willie Harmon appeared in court today. He's charged with second degree murder and felony firearm and the death of his 25 year old niece Kendra Gardner. The shooting happened in late December inside of Harmon's West Side Detroit home. After today's hearing, the victim's mother spoke out to Local 4. I'm hurt because I look at the fact is he wasn't insane when he picked that gun up and when he picked that drink up when he was drinking and partying in his home on that day when he took my baby's life. Today, Harmon's defense attorney told the judge her client is unable to assist in his own defense. The Boy Scouts of America has added its voice to a growing social controversy by announcing that it will now allow transgender children who identify as boys to enroll in the Boy Scouts. Jody Maldonado was born eight years ago, but two years ago identified as a boy. Joe Maldonado enrolled in the Scouts, but was forced Where out once you? they found out he was transgender. His mom filed a lawsuit and now he's back and with high hopes. I hope I get a lot of badges, I do fun activities, you know, eat s'mores, go camping. In 2013, the Boy Scouts allowed openly gay youth to participate, and in 2015, it lifted an earlier ban on gay adults serving as scout leaders. Still to come here, it's Tuesday, which of course always means Tasty Tuesday around here. And boy, did we have uh, a yummy popcorn with pizzazz this morning. How this local mom's special treat for her kids turned into a poppin' business and treats we have been eating all day long, Brandon. Looking for a good Super Bowl snack? Mm -hmm. You can head there and get a Tasty Tuesday discount today. Snow this morning, has anybody seen the sun? Not in a while. I've got a couple of days where we're seeking sunshine next. Visit Suburban. Welcome back, everybody. Today on Ellen, a Detroit superstar is going to be taking the stage. Big Sean is going to be performing his hit song Moves from his upcoming album entitled I Decided. A little time and a lot of talent. Do a little talking and a lot of action. See the competition, not a challenge. I lay, I move, I walk through in this Packed out, but I can count on my hands, so I'm going to talk to in this Big Sean's fourth album is set to release on Friday. And in addition to Big Sean, also on Ellen today, 50 Shades of Darker star Jamie Dornan will be on. So all the more reason to watch Ellen at 3, followed by Local 4 News first at 4. Brandon, over to you. All right, one last look here at some of the snow totals from this morning. Again, one of the big winners, Metro Airport and Romulus, 4.3 inches overnight into this morning. Ann Arbor, 3.6. Ypsilanti right next door, 3.5. That makes sense. Livonia, about three inches. West Bloomfield, two and a half. So the models did a great job verifying this Alberta Clipper coming through. And we have low clouds and fog producing a little bit of light snow, not looking really at any more accumulation today. 31 degrees. West southwest winds are seven, so it feels like 24. Look what's back. Ice chunks in the Detroit River, and although we get a mild day temperature wise today and tomorrow, the cold air does return, and so we'll get colder and colder. Spotty snow shower, especially in our north zone. 35 degrees means we may even get a couple of areas of drizzle. Can't be completely shocked and surprised. And during the evening commute, that is something to watch out for just for extra slippery conditions. Evening snow very scattered 27 degrees overnight really just becoming breezy. Here's a look at what we have on the radar picture right now and you can see some of the snow showers that will be coming into our north zone. And there's still a couple over through Grand Rapids area that have to pinwheel through tomorrow. We should get into a little bit of afternoon sun. The winds are going to pick up and maybe a lake effect snow shower or two in the afternoon. Nothing big here and there's that sun right on Groundhog Day. So he comes out, sees his shadow, and six more weeks of winter. Yay! It's colder, though, certainly on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, as we head into uh, the weekend. Not looking at much other than Super Bowl Sunday snow. It should be on the lighter side. And if you're looking for a little snack for your Super Bowl party, check this out. We're talking about pigging out on popcorn without packing on the pounds. A Detroit mom wanted her family's health improved, so she created Shayla Since Gourmet Popcorn plus other Tasty Tuesday treats. 
It's popping in Detroit's Eastern Market at a place called Shayla Since. Chef and owner Cynthia Davis gained her gourmet popcorn prowess from her mother. And she knew she was on to something after putting her popcorn in the kids' lunch boxes. Come to find out, uh, their teachers kept eating it and it started to start something on its own at that point. Cynthia and her family air pop their killer kernels right here in Detroit. The flavors being shot into the corn come from trace minerals, B vitamin, Himalayan sea salts. It's as healthy a snack attack as you can have. The most popular flavor as of right now is our Detroit mix. Which combines organic spices, black pepper and dill pickle. On our sweet side is the sea salt and caramel. People can't get enough of it. You can find Shayla since in Eastern Market, your local market, and now in Whole Foods. Cynthia says they're just getting the popping process started. She even has a new line of decadent vegan desserts. From zucchini bread, um, cupcakes, cookies, red velvet cake, carrot cake, all being vegan as well. Listening to her fans helps Cynthia conjure up the Detroit mix and Sriracha Ranch. To be a part of the city's growth, she lends an ear of corn to her customers. Sexy firecracker, that was my favorite. A little spice to it. Shayla Since is offering $2 discount on a bag of popcorn after you buy a bag of popcorn and mention Tasty Tuesday. Again, they're in uh, Eastern Market Shed 5. Rhonda? Oh, and it is delicious, especially the Detroit blend. All right, still to come, super studs. The Super Bowl is coming up, of course, this Sunday, and one man is using science to figure out who is the best-looking quarterback in the NFL. We'll show you the results coming up next. Replay so and before we go, on a lighter note, the Super Bowl is just five days away, and while most people are focusing on the game and who's yeah. going to win, there's this professor in Massachusetts that decided to figure out who's the best-looking quarterback in the NFL. It's a tough job. Well, he conducted a survey asking non-football fans to rank QB's headshots, despite what you might expect. Tom Brady did not finish first. He came in second behind Kansas City's Alex Smith. And the other Super Bowl quarterback, which is Atlanta's Matt Ryan, if you're wondering, he came in 17th. As far as we know, uh, our quarterback, Matt Stafford, wasn't on the list.